Greetings viewers, it's I, Terry, and I'm basically creating this video as a sort of tutorial on how to how to get started on Second Life. Now, I've used all the different viewers that are available, and um, Singularity was the best to use for someone that doesn't have a very fancy computer, uh, maybe it lags a lot and it's kind of slow and I used to recommend Singularity to any, anyone that had a any lag issues and Firestorm seemed to be one of the most popular viewers for if you like features lots of little features and options that you can adjust and set up and for the longest time I I used Firestorm it was my favorite it worked best for me it was simple to use has a great layout and everything and then control alt studio came along I think it came out several months ago and somebody mentioned it to me and I tried it out I'm using it right now and the verdict is it's my favorite. It's my new favorite. I love it because it's as great as Firestorm. It uses the same layout as Firestorm. And it's it's it it doesn't have any lag at all. No no lag. It's nice and smooth. I can move the camera and everything and it it's very fluid. Whereas when I used Firestorm there was a slight delay in camera movement, but I don't get that on Control Alt Studio. Anyway, the first thing you're going to need to do is download the thing. And, well, you might have to... Actually, the first step is to create a Second Life account on their Second Life website altogether. But after you do that, Google Control Alt Studio, and it should bring up this website. and you can download it you can download it by going to viewer the top of the page and down it downloads it says Windows or Mac and it's not available for Mac sorry Mac users it's not available for Mac but it might someday because it says at present so yeah Windows users for you came out August 19th 2014 which wasn't too long ago it's a pretty new viewer and I downloaded it it's really great I love it hopefully I don't have to explain to you how to install a program and run it you basically log in using your Second Life username and password that you created when you joined up on the Second Life website. And c compared to the original Second Life viewer, I think this one blows it out of the water. But that's just me. It's really all about preference. Everybody has their own opinion. And some people actually prefer using the original Second Life viewer. I can't comprehend it it's not I don't agree with that but some people do and that's okay they can use it probably the first thing probably the most important thing to learn is how to move around like arrow keys turn you go forward backward which I don't have much walking space because I'm on a wooden plank in the middle of the ocean but anyway you can find a camera control icon down here at the bottom of the screen click on that this little window should appear in the top right corner and you can click this spot to move it around anywhere you want it you can click the edges to make the window larger or smaller uh, this side kinda 
moves the camera, strapping it right and left, up and down. It's kind of funny that I said that backwards from the way I did it. But anyway, this rotates the camera. Very useful controls. You can zoom in, zoom out. Whatever you need. And then a really useful feature is this little magnifying glass that says object view. And you notice my mouse pointer turned into a little magnifying glass. And now if I click the camera will focus on whatever I click at. It's useful for whenever you want to focus on something. And after you've clicked on something to focus on, like this necklace right here, you push the up key on the keyboard and it'll zoom in nice and easy. And you push down to zoom out. It's a really nice feature. I love that magnifying glass. You use it quite often. It's great for getting really good pictures, which I will show you now. Got the camera down here at the bottom. You can save pictures to your inventory can save it to your computer which is disk or if you have a Flickr account you can save it to Flickr so yeah I'm gonna save that picture to my inventory which you gotta have money to do that cause uploading pictures to Second Life costs 10 lindens which isn't isn't bad I mean yeah, lindens grow on trees in Second Life you get a second life job and you'll earn lindens left and right it's it's great compared to some other programs I've used I'm not naming any names okay so I took that picture so it should now be in my inventory which is this little suitcase icon and you can see my pictures and they'll be in your photo album folder. That's a pretty good picture. If I do say so myself. I probably would have liked it a little, a little lower so I could see my necklace, but that's okay. But yeah, that's the inventory. Not much really to say about it, just that it basically stores all your stuff. There's all my folders. Textures, on the other hand. If you wanted to upload a picture off of your computer, that costs 10 lindens, I think. And you can upload pictures of your real self. Don't I look good? <laughs> yeah. Um, to do that, you go up here to the top left corner click avatar upload image and you can choose a picture from your computer and it'll upload whatever you want I got lots of Terry faces lots of me but yeah that's pretty much the gist of it that's pictures I've got 11k worth of items. That's all the stuff I've accumulated since I've been on Second Life. I've heard horror stories of people that have over 100k. That's a lot of junk. But yep, yeah, you got everything, your favorites, your landmarks, your lost and found. I'll let you go through your own inventory on your own time. But, yeah, it's basically what stores all your stuff. One important detail, though, is that anything 
that another person gives you in Second Life will appear in your objects folder. You, this is where the majority of your junk will end up because people pass other people things all the time in Second Life if it's transferable and it'll appear here in your objects folder. I got a Pokeball from somebody got a bag of Skittles you know just basically all kinds of crazy little gadgets you can play with probably should have started with this but if you look in the top right corner you got this speaker icon you can adjust the different volume levels uh, turn on see this music note some areas don't have music but if you go into an area that does have music the music note will appear you can click on it and it'll play music whatever the radio station is of that area right now it's on an anime radio station and this notification that just popped up is a club I work at you get group notifications if you're in a group um, but what I should have started with was Avatar Preferences because you'll need to go here to get everything set up the way you like it. I myself have everything set the way it is if you want to just copy what I do what I like just take the time to pause this video on each window and it'll it'll be what I like and you can make it your own These are just the way I like my settings. The graphics max number of imposters is kind of important because I think it has to do with the amount of people that your graphics card loads so if you're in a crowded club that has more than 40 people and you have your imposter limit set to 40 it'll only load 40 people and any more than that it'll just not render them and they won't be showing up on your screen but I like to keep it pretty high cuz I like to see everybody even if sometimes it's kinda hard on the computer specs I think I forgot to mention radar radar is a nice feature that I enjoy using it basically tells you when somebody enters chat range leaves chat range and it'll it'll appear down here and in local chat it'll say so and so left chat range and that tells you that if you type in local chat they can't see what you're typing anymore so there's no point in trying to talk to them they're out of range and you gotta instant message them if you want your words to reach them sound and media I like to keep things automatic for it to autoplay when entering or leaving it's useful for when I watch movies on my Second Life TV it'll automatically start network and cache this is a useful tab if you need to clean out your 
your case inventory and case all together. Basically, this is where all your all your Second Life data is stored. Everything you do, everywhere you go, every little thing that loads is stored in a folder called your case. And I like to clean out my case about once a month. Some people might need once a week if they don't have much room on their computer. Uh, really depends on the size of your hard drive. If you want to store more junk or less junk. And after you do reset your cache, it'll take longer to load into Second Life the next time you use it because it'll be loading everything for the first time because you deleted it. That's what resetting the cache is. But it's good. It's good to reset every now and then. Camera. I like my camera where it is. Movement, I like that where it is. Notifications. Uh, yeah. Privacy. Look at's a nifty feature. You can show look at targets, and it's basically a little uh, ridicule ridicule thing that it shows what your avatar is currently looking at. Let me see if I can show you. I guess not. I don't see it. Oh, there it is. And I fell in the water. <laughs> you see that little uh, crosshair with my name above it? That is the look at target. It shows what my avatar is looking at. Anytime that you use the, the magnifying glass to view something, it'll center your camera. And I think it centers the, the ridicule thing too. Yeah, there it goes. basically shows what you're looking at. It's a nice feature. You can turn on auto responses if you're busy. Advanced. I don't mess with this stuff. User interface. Toasts. I don't know why they call it toasts. But toasts are these little notification windows that pop up in the top right corner of your screen. That's what toasts are. They're notifications, so I don't know why they call them toasts. But that's what they are, so there you go. I was at ID, so that's why I have all those ID notifications up. Skins. Firestorm. Yeah, I basically don't mess with anything else. Uh, the, the tabs that I look at the most are general, chat, graphics, sound and media, network and cache, move and view, privacy, and that's about it. Me, yeah, that's about it. Okay, another important feature to look into is outfits. 
Now this is something every girl should know, since the girls on Second Life love to go shopping in the marketplace. Yeah, you the, the outfits window will be your friend. See the little t-shirt icon at the bottom of the screen? That'll open this window. As you can see, I have a lot of outfits I've saved. You click on it and it shows everything with the outfit. Let's see, what can I try on? Far Cry theme. This was a outfit I put together recently for a, a Far Cry 3 event that I had at ID. I clicked on the outfit and I clicked the wear button and it changes everything. That looks very Far Cry 3, right? Got camo and stuff. Cargo pants. But, yeah. It's my Far Cry 3 outfit. And if I wanted to maybe change it up a little bit, uh, maybe wear something different, Let's say, for example, I wanted to keep the same outfit on, but wanted to uh, make it a, a, a swimming outfit since I'm in the ocean. Well, you can like, you can right click on any of these individual things, and click take off, and uh, take them off one at a time, and I got a bunch of alpha layers, so I got a lot to remove. I'm gonna save time by clipping it. There, I detached everything that I wasn't wearing for that outfit. And now it looks like I'm swimming in the ocean in my boxers. <laughs> Not technically a swimming outfit, but whatever. It works for the same purpose. But yeah, there you go. That's how you alter an outfit, and then you can uh, make sure not to save over your current outfit, but click the save as button and you can save it as something else we'll name this one Perry Swimwear Neko and there you go you have a new outfit Terry Swimwear Neko and yeah it's great because you can just if you want to put your stuff back on just go back to your previous outfit, click the wear button, and there you go. I'm all dressed up again. Simple as that. There's also this wearing tab that shows you everything that you've currently got on, but I don't really see the point of that. I mean, you can just... It highlights the outfit you're currently wearing in purple so you can just click on it and then look to see what you're wearing anything that you're wearing that is highlighted and if you want something off just right click on it and then click detach and it's no longer on and you notice that it's not highlighted anymore it's not purple Yep, that's about it for outfits. Another thing to learn about is voice chat. You see the microphone icon at the bottom of the screen. It might not be over here on uh, your screen. It may be over here somewhere. But sometimes I accidentally 
click and drag it around so it could be anywhere I'm not very good at clicking and dragging things I think it was over here originally but anyway you check the little checkbox here and then you click the microphone button and he'll start using voice not all places have voice chat so some places you go especially clubs might have that turned off altogether so voice chats only available in certain areas certain places now the people command is kinda useful it brings up this window of people uh, the current tab is people uh, that are nearby which is no one I'm in an empty area right now for the purpose of this video you got your friends you got your groups uh, but I don't I don't usually use this window the really the only reason I use the people window is to, to get a quick heads up to who's standing around me so basically I only use it for the nearby nearby people to look at my friends and such I click the nearby chat button at the bottom left corner of the screen and then I go to contacts and I go to friends and there's all my friends groups you go through your groups however many groups you're in and you click activate if you wanna change your title for the purpose of the video I'll just activate the ID stalker group and now I'm the stalker if anybody else has anything they want to learn about in Second Life then just let me know and I'll be happy to make a video about it I'll see what I can do so then take care everyone and have a lovely day